Good evening, Donnie Walker here. Just got home about, oh, about an hour and a half ago, I guess. Making my sweetie a uh, homemade lasagna tonight. We got some great news today. We're uh, opening a daycare. My, my gal, Shelly, my better half, um, took a course at college to be a daycare worker and open up to look after kids. So we rented a spot at the local church that we know and um, we finally got all the numbers right and the inspections and the health board and fire inspection and everything going. So she's there tonight organizing it again after we already been there doing some of it. But just great. So now she's going to have a good income and um, it's going to help us out for retirement. Um, we got eight kids already and we're going to probably open up a second one after. She's a little entrepreneur and hopefully it works out. Down below here, you can see all these kids playing soccer. My daughter played soccer in this field when she first started soccer, when she was quite young. Uh, now she's a dental assistant, I told you, for um, assisting surgeons. Oh, just the last couple of planes coming in tonight. Harbor planes, sea planes. Almost a full moon out there, eh? Yeah, pretty close. The beach is just past the apartment there. Anyways, just thought I'd share that with you. Um, got um, a lot of work done today. Did um, <clears throat> two 461 saws. One for a fellow over in Vancouver. <clears throat> he bought it um, for not a bad deal, I guess, for what it is. But someone really make 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 upped it up you know what i mean like they put uh like a used car dealership you know would make your old car look shiny and good and really underneath it it's a, it's a lemon right so it had an aftermarket cylinder on it, which i showed you the other day um on the video one of the bad ones that was the still 461 one not the 372 and i do have to clarify well not really clarify um I have to say, some, a lot of people made comments on that. I said those those aftermarket ones are no good. Well, which most of them aren't, but these are these were early ones. I gotta I gotta tell you, you know, like they're they're obviously been a few years before they were bought, right? And yes, I know the newer ones are better. The meteor ones definitely are probably the best ones I've seen so far. Some of the highway ones are getting a lot better too. I definitely admit that. Um, so I'm just, I'm just telling you that, you know, I don't have nothing, to, nothing really against the aftermarket ones, as long as they're good quality and they're going to work, right? So anyways, yeah, I got that saw done, but I put in a new OEM cylinder on for him, ported it nice for him, um, did a muffler mod, um, uh, put a side piece on the left side by the starter. I opened that up uh, to about a seven eight size hole. Then the the regular um, stock um, exhaust on that is is, is is quite crappy, you know. You're not to like a, what is it, 79 cc saw? No, 77. Stock exhaust hole is like no bigger than my pinky finger, right? So that's that side I take and I, I cut it out with a little mini disc make that bigger and make myself a new uh, outlet there and put that on instead of using the bark box because I didn't have them in those days I liked the bark boxes but there was nothing wrong with the way I did them they worked just fine and you know what louder isn't much better a lot of times yeah maybe it is on the dyno sheets it's hard to say I'll tell you that later um, yeah then I did another one for another uh, company a 461 it was running kind of crappy, so it wasn't that old, but if someone had been using some really stale old gas in it, like the uh, uh, the piston was just black and brown under the rings. Like, it was just weird and a lot of carbon in it. So I um, cleaned it all up, ported it, uh, did the muffler that old way, like I said. Uh, checked his carburetor, you know, um, fuel filter, obviously, and all that stuff. Regapped his coil. Checked his oiler system out, you know, when you, um, when I do use used ones, you know, like you got to go through them, you know, you don't want to, um, everything's got to still work. You don't know if 
the oiler line was a bit plugged or something, you know, and most, no one ever services their oilers. Most people don't know how to. They really should. Um, a good a good thing to do sometimes with a fallen saw is like, um, just throw a little gas in your oil, oil tank when it's um, empty of oil. Swish it around to get a bunch of that sawdust out of there and stuff, and hopefully the, the pickup isn't getting plugged, you know. You can't just pull the pickup out of those oil tanks uh, on saws like you can the fuel tank. The fuel tank, you can just use a little hook, hook piece of uh, uh, curtain um, clothes hanger or, you know, the steel tool you get with the hook or just any piece of little metal with a hook. Pull the fuel line out, check the fuel filter, which is more of a, a maintenance and changeable thing, a serviceable thing you should be doing. I told you before, you got to do it once a month, man. Throw a fuel filter in a, in a, a daily use saw. And a spark plug. The oiler, yeah, you can do that, clean it a bit, or really uh, bring it into a shop, get it serviced. And that time when it's in, yeah, you're probably ready, maybe for maybe a clutch drum uh, or oiler gear, or a new uh, sprocket. And as we got all that stuff off, then we get into the oiler, pull the oiler off, and we'll pull out the line right out of the um, oiler compartment and clean the screen and and the hose. So that's kind of one practice I'd like to do, you know, like uh, you got to have oil to that bar, especially with the long bars we run. And um, just a guide right too, you know, guys are saying, oh, their chains are skipping off and stuff while their sprockets so wore out. Like, you know, like sprockets are 12 bucks, guys. I think around that, maybe 19. Big deal. That that matches your chain to your bar all the time. And, and it doesn't, doesn't make the chain stretch as much. And... Uh, a wander weird if you have a fresher sprocket on it and then you know a lot of times on your bar when you what's on the saw you know like my dad told me years ago and i still try to do it when i um sell guys bars i'll take the end, end of the bar you know where the chain approaches onto it rides up onto it take a big flathead screwdriver and open it up a bit just just a bit so that so the chain guides in there better sometimes they're a little tight right there so check that out you know, with the, you're not going to have the chain flipping off or anything. So uh, why I was getting to that was the clutches. Okay, so an example today, a young fellow brings in a 201 TEC. He's going to camp tomorrow. He's got to have this thing working. So he brings it in the last minute, and the, the chain's running on. Like, he says, oh, the throttle's running on or something, eh? <clears throat> and um, I'm like, so the guy out front, Rob, my coworker. Hey Rob, if you're watching, um, he says, "Donnie, can you can you help this guy out, please? Uh, you know, he's going to camp tomorrow. He's last minute, man." I'm like, "Yeah, okay, man, I'll fit him up." It was like 4:30, you know, we close at five, but I've always don't mind helping the guys if they're in a rush and it's something easy to fix. I'll give them a hand, right? And I've always been that way. Me and my dad service for years. It was pretty much like a drive-through system. He used to go the the loggers and the fallers when we had our little pot belly stove in our old garage you know me and my dad would be in there uh, working away on saws all day and around three o'clock the guys would start pouring in you know they're all soaking wet their stand fuels are dripping and we're like okay cork boots off at the door you can come stand by the fire and crack us open up a lucky they always brought in a six pack of beer shouldn't be saying that we don't do that anymore Definitely don't do that anymore. I don't even drink right now. Anyways, so it was a great thing though. The guys would warm up by the fire and they'd be like, oh, Donnie, can you check my saw here? Something's going on, you know? So I was like, okay, I'll quickly fix it. Throw a throttle cable on a 372 or, you know, a clutch spring on something. <coughs> so we've always kind of done that. And today I thought, yeah, sure, man, I'll help th this young fellow out. So uh, I, I go, I think about it, eh? I go in the back and thinking, okay, I must do one on TC. I've seen some of them where um, guys are cutting a lot of fines and they're not looking after their air filter very good. And you get um, some sawdust buildup uh, between the throttle lever plate and where it stops. You gotta remember they don't have an idle, idle adjustment or low and high speed, but they got this spot where that uh, throttle uh, trigger goes back to. And I've seen some of them jammed up with stuff in there and it makes the throttle hold it open. So I thought I'd quickly check that. And it wasn't a problem. 
So then I'm like, okay, okay, whatever. Let's go run this thing. I'll reset it. I'll do the reset. It's a newer version of the uh, 5.0, whatever you call it these days. The, the still uh, Amtronic. So I run it. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, well, it's not really idling. I have the chains turning. I'm like, yeah, it's a clutch spring or the clutch bearing's dry or something, you know. Oh, yeah, sure enough, pull the side cover off. One touch is broken. The other ones are all wore halfway through. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, changing all three. Got to change all three, man. Always change all three. They're only a couple dollars each. I give the guy the other ones that aren't broken, them as a spare, so he can go to camp and he won't have a problem or something. He can throw it in. All blind uh, deaf dogs barking in the back there looking for human food because the lasagna's cooking. She smells today. It's the only thing she has left is her smell, the poor little thing. 18 year old, man. Let me go just quiet her out. So anyways, yeah, man, your chain's turning, man, and you haven't, like, nothing's gone weird with your throttle system or anything. Check your clutch springs. You know, you, you guys, you pros out there, you guys should be throwing some in them, uh, you know, probably every few months or something, you know, sometimes. Most of the time, you they only really um, get hot and stretched if you get stuck and, you know, obviously you're pulling on the saw, it's stuck and you're burning the clutch and smoking away. The chain is all burning off it or the friction of the metal, eh? Or these ones are just because they're war, man. These guys are like doing single stemming uh, where they climb up and uh, top the tree and, and delimit and they, they have it jigged up in the bottom and then the helicopter comes up and breaks it off the bottom and woo, lifts it up and gets it out of areas. Saves on road building and stuff. And they go and make a lot of money out of it. So anyways, just thought I'd tell you that, man. So, uh, yeah, clutch springs. Do maintenance on your oiler stuff. And, uh, yeah, my lasagna is pretty much ready. Go back in. You all have a good night. Keep your saw in the wood. Shelly's just home here, so I got to get dinner. Have a... Okay. Have a good night.